scientists have been bowled over to find out that unusual and unexpected things are occurring on Neptune. Neptune is the keeper of the deep, the last acknowledged principal planet from the solar system that marks the shore of the black depths of interstellar space. Neptune wasn't discovered till 1846, no matter having a diameter for instance that of Earth and being 4.5 billion kilometers away from us, making it appear small and dim even to effective telescopes. At some point of the beyond too a long time, scientists have seen dramatic modifications in the planet's atmosphere, and its most recent changes have scientists involved. What is happening on Neptune and the way can this have a damaging effect on our ordinary lives? Let's find out. Neptune is not something you pay attention a lot about, is it? Simply not as often as the other planets. Pictures of Jupiter's clouds and Mars's floor are often furnished by using space robots. Mercury is frequently blamed for astrology lovers' terrible days, even though Mercury being in retrograde is actually just an optical illusion in our nighttime sky. The Cassini spacecraft orbited Saturn for 13 entire years before crashing into the planet, ending its illustrious run of observations. Moreover, planetary scientists have said that NASA ought to supply pinnacle precedence to sending a probe to Uranus in the approaching 10 years. In truth, Neptune's quick presence in the headlines due to a new study regarding what makes Neptune so blue was unusual. Even that discovery, in accordance with Patrick Irwin, the research lead writer and a planetary physicist at Oxford University, was unintentional. Irwin claimed that his crew's purpose was to analyze the atmospheres of Neptune and Uranus as a substitute than to investigate the specific enigma of Neptune's stunning look. This is how the two ice giants, so named because researchers suppose the planets had been initially glommed collectively from icy substances, are regularly investigated. They're more or less the same size, bigger than Earth but smaller than Jupiter and Saturn, and share a variety of other characteristics. They are planets without surfaces that have atmospheres made from hydrogen, helium, and a small amount of methane. Scientists trust that beneath extreme stress deep inside these gadgets, diamonds are being shaped. While carbon atoms are compressed, science has previously regarded that the methane in Neptune's and Uranus's atmospheres absorbs the purple colors of incoming sunlight and leaves blues and greens for our eyes to view, giving them their generally bluish appearance. Anand and his buddies determined that a certain layer of methane haze on Uranus is twice as thick as its miles on Neptune. Even though, if there were no haze, Owen claimed these atmospheres could be certainly blue. They get paler when haze is introduced. The scientists hypothesize that Neptune's surroundings, which is more turbulent, is better ideal for stirring up methane particles and scaling down the secretion because of this. Neptune is the bluest planet in our solar gadget, while Uranus is a mild aquamarine making them the best assessment for our most underappreciated planets. Neptune could, in theory, be capable of revel in its function within the cosmic lineup as the planet that is furthest from the solar, but each person is nevertheless debating whether or not Pluto counts as a full-fledged planet or not, no matter losing its function inside the very last position in 2006. When planetary scientists aren't arguing over that, they are searching out Planet 9, an imaginary planet that is said to orbit the sun beyond Neptune and whose existence may want to provide an explanation for the unusual orbits of some remote celestial planets. If NASA follows the advice of the scientific community and sends a spacecraft to Uranus within the coming years, Neptune might be the only planet the people haven't yet visited on a unique challenge. It wasn't until astronomers noted that Uranus, which were found by telescope in 1781, turned into being pulled approximately in its orbit by using the gravity of an unknown celestial frame that they diagnosed it was there. Eventually discovered in 1846, Neptune turned into observed exactly where scientists had expected. NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft arrived in 1989, a few years and technological improvements later, zooming beyond Neptune and the closing for all on a grand tour of the outer planets. We got a close-up view of a gorgeously blue globe, its moons, and its jewelry during the flyby. Undoubtedly, Neptune has rings, despite the fact that not as beautiful as Saturn's. They do exist and have been constructed from tiny rock and dust fragments. Since then, no spacecraft has landed on Neptune because Uranus is closer and would be simpler for our space robots to reach. Planetary scientists currently recommended choosing one ice massive over the opposite to NASA. Exploring planets that take so long to orbit the Sun, 84 years for Uranus and an excellent 165 years for Neptune, affords this type of challenge. Undoubtedly, 
a focused undertaking to Uranus that landed in the early 2030s might growth our knowledge of both ice giants but does not actually supply Neptune its due. The final planets within the solar device have a completely unique history and peculiarities that are captivating and enigmatic in and of themselves and deserving of our targeted attention. A collection of Hubble Space Telescope observations of the giant planet Neptune famous that a large dark storm raging in its northern hemisphere became transferring south. While it made a sharp U-turn and started transferring back north, in addition, it would have given birth to a young darkish typhoon within the method. The term ice giant refers to Neptune, which is essentially a massive ball of hydrogen and helium gas that also carries a number of methane, ammonia, and other molecules. For historical motives, planetary scientists nevertheless talk to these molecules as ices, even though they're gases. Neptune is the largest planet that is the furthest from the solar at a distance of 4.5 billion kilometers, about four times the diameter of Earth. Scientists were shocked by means of the picture's Voyager 2 again after passing with the aid of Neptune in 1989. It discovered a large oval darkish hurricane the size of Earth within the planet's southern hemisphere, the terrific darkish spot. So named because it had the fastest wind ever recorded within the solar device, with wind speeds of an outstanding 2,100 kilometers in line with hour. But the spot changed into gone whilst Hubble discovered Neptune in 1994, poof, disappeared. There is absolute confidence that Neptune storms develop over shorter durations than the ones on Jupiter, wherein the top-notch purple spot has persevered for hundreds of years. As an example, a small dark patch in Neptune's southern hemisphere was located in the identical 1994 Hubble observations. This dark spot ought to have shaped between Voyager's flyby and the Hubble picks. Since then, Hubble has found several more black spots. They develop at mid-latitudes in each hemisphere and generally tend to transport inside the path of the equator. However, they face certain loss of life in the event that they do that as a result of the Coriolis impact, which states that the speed of a planet's rotation varies with range, with a maximum on the equator and a minimum at the poles. Air flowing outward from a massive high-press device or inward in the direction of a low-pressure one will purpose the system to start rotating as it meets air moving at extreme extraordinary speeds to the north and south. As these Neptunian storms pass in that direction, the Coriolis influence weakens toward the equator, causing them to fragment. The majority of these storms appear to become there not this time in September 2018. Hubble observed a mysterious storm in Neptune's northern hemisphere. The entire continental United States could easily fit inside this vast, over 7,000-kilometer-wide object, which was seen to be traveling south. However, inspections made in January 2020 revealed that the storm's southern motion had been reversed and was now once again headed north. Neptune is a mystery to scientists who study it. However, there's more. This storm has been associated with two further odd occurrences. One is that it appeared to have created a smaller dark hurricane at the time it changed its mind and began moving north again. This is expected to occur by some computer simulations of Neptune's ecosystem, especially as a large storm begins to dissipate towards the equator while it could drop smaller vortices, even though it wasn't directly observed since the observation was spaced too far apart. It's possible that this is what happened in this instance. It could have shifted direction due to that. According to certain theories, surprisingly, Unlike almost every other dark hurricane, this one does not have vivid white clouds circling its edges. These methane ice crystal clouds are highly reflective and appear white in imaging. Winds convey methane gas up the slopes of the dark hurricane's high-press system, which resembles the amount of air in the atmosphere here. The methane cools and crystallizes into ice orographic clouds, which occur when water-rich air pushes up the side of a mountain, cools, and condenses to create clouds. These are traditional on Earth. Pictures from 2019 showed the unique white clouds, but they vanished at the beginning of this year. The peculiar behavior of the Black Typhoon is probably related to this, or perhaps not due to its distance. Neptune is hard to have a look at and recognize, and regardless of its giant size, it still seems very small in our telescopes. It also carries challenging to understand what's going on there because of the atmosphere's rapid changes. Neptune additionally has Triton, a plane-sized international with a clear icy surface that's stolen from a nearby vicinity millions of years ago. Triton is one of the maximum captivating moons inside the Sun device. As was previously mentioned, 
Voyager 2 sent back its sole near up picture to us in 1989. But this year, JWST focused on the far off planet, sending back some of the best pictures of its moons and earrings that we've got seen in the past 30 years. Methane, ammonia, and water are among several chemicals discovered inside Neptune. But because methane also absorbs infrared mild, Neptune appears especially faint in JWST photos. Methane is very good at absorbing pink light, giving the planet an icy appearance of a rich blue. It does, however, have methane ice clouds at high altitudes, which, in comparison to the gaseous structure, are highly reflective and seem bright. Much like storms on Jupiter, they appear at various latitudes above the deeper cloud deck. Neptune has numerous jewelry similar to the other three large planets. These earrings are likely made of ice debris, which have been covered in different molecules that give them a reddish appearance. This makes them brighter in infrared wavelengths and makes them visible in the JWST image. You can also see Neptune orbiting a dozen minor moons. Proteus is a bit over 400 kilometers in diameter, while most are small and irregularly shaped, measuring under 200 kilometers in width. Several of them are superimposed on the rings. These are called shepherd moons because it's suspected that they spin, and gravity may assist in condensing the adjacent ring debris into little bands. What about that beautiful teal star? Certainly, it is Triton, noted earlier, the largest moon of Neptune at 2,700 kilometers wide. It's slightly wider than our own moon at 2,700 kilometers, but larger than Pluto. The lines running through it are diffraction spikes produced when light bends around the three legs holding the secondary mirror of the JWST together, as well as the hexagonal shape of its component mirrors. It appears bright because it is covered in frozen nitrogen, which is highly reflective. A larger source, such as Neptune, also has them, but they are smeared out and appear much fainter, making them difficult to see. Only when the light source is very small in an image, what astronomers refer to as a point source, can you get them this obvious? Triton is an oddball. It orbits Neptune backward in relation to the planet's rotation, leading astronomers to hypothesize that it might be a large Kuiper belt object that was long ago drawn in by the planet's gravity. It's difficult to accomplish this, and the precise process in this instance is unknown. In this up-close view of Neptune, the clouds and rings are more clearly visible, along with some of their fainter rings. It's interesting to see that a very thin, faint line circles the planet only around its equator. The movement in Neptune's atmosphere moves from the poles towards the equator, where the gases sink and heat up, making it very similar to our ecosystem. This weak arc is probably warmer gas that is heating up and emitting infrared light. Neptune and Triton can be seen in this breathtaking wide-angle view once again. But this time, practically everything else in the picture is a background galaxy that is hundreds of millions or possibly billions of light years away. It serves as a poetic reminder that Neptune is the solar system's final major colony. Since an orbiter could spend years first at Uranus before moving on to orbit Neptune, Scientists are very interested in developing a mission specifically designed to explore the outer planets. Sending a probe that stays on a planet for a long time is the best way to learn about it, as we found with Cassini at Saturn. Features come and go, situations shift, and perhaps most importantly, when researchers find novel occurrences, they can direct the spaceship to investigate more closely. While learning new things is essential, a focus goal allows you to stay and probably confirm their foundation. We also learned that lesson from the voyage of flying seeing Neptune up close for the first time allowed for discoveries like the dark storms. But if we want to understand them, we need to go there again and again. So are we ever going to Neptune? Obviously not with astronauts, but rather with a spacecraft created solely to investigate the mysteries of our eighth planet. The James Webb Space Telescope, the most recent space observatory in existence, is currently watching the ice giant, and should produce further previously unobtainable data about the makeup of its atmosphere. However, it's not the same as truly being in orbit. By that standard, we have no information of Neptune and probably never will. A current challenge plan for an orbiter to Neptune called for an initial launch in 2033 and an arrival in 2049. However, traveling to Uranus first might mean delaying the timescale by at least 10 years. The bluest planet may not get a spacecraft companion until well into the 2050s.